What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. The video I have for you today is the movies are coming for April of 2024. This is where I give you an early preview of what movies you could possibly find at your local movie theater the following month. Now I have to be honest, I'm not overly enthusiastic about the lineup for April. It seems like the majority of these films I didn't even know were being released. I haven't seen a trailer or any advertising for most of these movies. Plus, on top of that, there's really no big film to get excited about, no blockbuster. So it's kind of a very tame month of April. So we're starting off with April 2nd. There's one film being released, and it's called Someone Like You. Now, this is a romance based off of a book. Personally for myself, this movie's not for me. I can already tell. I'm not huge into the romance genre to begin with, so I'm probably not going to go and see this film. I'm not opposed to seeing it ever, but actually going to the theater to seeing this film, probably not going to happen. And I'm not saying it's not a good movie. Maybe it is, but I'm not sure because I don't know anything about this movie. This is one of the titles that I did not know was being released. However, let's not completely just you know, push someone like you off to the side because movie adaptations from books can sometimes really surprise us at the box office because last year, Where the Crawdads Sing was a surprise. It made a decent amount of money. So someone like you could possibly, you know, repeat that success. I'm not saying it will, but it is possible. There's a lot of book lovers and book readers out there. So you never know. So someone like you, if you've read the book, you didn't know the movie's coming out, there you are. Get all excited for April 2nd. But now let's talk about the first official weekend of April. It's April 5th. We have two brand new releases on this date. The first one being The First Omen. Now I had to Google this information because I was kind of unsure with the title of the film with first being in the title, is this an actual prequel? Because it really wasn't clear in the trailer, which I've seen numerous times, if this is a prequel or not. Well, I Googled it and on Google it said, yes, this is a prequel to the original Omen film. So there, that answers the question. Now the question is, am I going to go and see this movie or not? I'm thinking about it. I haven't seen any of the Omen movies. However, I did just recently pick up the Omen collection and I would like to dive into those movies before I see the first Omen, this brand new film coming out. So I'm going to have to see when I could fit watching those films, the prior Omen movies into my schedule and then when I'm going to go and see the first Omen because with there not being a lot of movies that I'm overly excited about, I won't be going to the theater that often, so maybe I won't see the first Omen until like later on in the month if it's still in theaters. I know that's not very promising for me to say, but if it's still in theaters at that point, I'll be open-minded. I'll go and see it. I've seen the trailer pretty much every single time I've gone to the movies in the past month and a half. They're marketing this film like crazy. So it's definitely out there. It's being advertised. I know all about it. It looks pretty creepy and, and pretty, it's just creepy. The music is creepy. It sets the tone and the vibe. I'm kind of curious about it. So I might go, and, it's probable that I'm going to go and see this one. But the other movie coming out on this date is called Monkey Man. Now Monkey Man is a brand new action film starring and directed by Dev Patel. And I do have to say, I've seen this trailer a couple of times. It is very reminiscent of John Wick, even down to the plot line. John Wick went out there and got revenge for the death of his dog. Well, in this movie, Dev Patel is out there getting revenge for the death of his mother. So it really is the same thing. It's a great formula to work with, yes, but I wish with action films we would kind of get away from the John Wick formula because as much as it works so well, this is now another copycat of that formula. Last year we had Sisu and now we have Monkey Man. 
And I, I kind of want a different action film. You know what I'm saying? I want a different reason for an action movie. I'm longing for the days where we had Sly and Arnold and Bruce. You know, like those were key days of action films. And it's kind of like act the action genre as a whole has kind of morphed into something else. And I'm longing for the 80s and the 90s days of action. I really, really am. We need more action stars. I'm glad that Dev Patel is stepping up to the plate and kind of filling in that void for an action star. Like I said, I've seen the trailer a couple times. It looks decent. It looks like a great movie, especially if he directed this. That's pretty impressive. So I might go and see this movie as well. It does look like it has some promise to it. It looks like it's good. So I'm going to give it a chance. I don't want to judge too harshly, but like I said, I'm just kind of getting, getting over, you know, it's overdone, the John Wick formula. We need something else. We, we just need something else. But you know what? I'll take anything. Some action, <laughs> this is going to sound bad, but some action is better than no action. You know what I'm saying? So I'll probably go and see Monkey Man. Also, I forgot to mention the movie is produced by Jordan Peele. All right, let's move on to a, I almost said February. Whoa, it's not February, it's April. April 12th. This is the largest new release weekend of April. There's four brand new films being released on the weekend of the 12th. The largest one being a brand new A24 title called Civil War. Now, the basic plot line of this movie is you have a bunch of journalists traveling, I'm assuming across the country, during the second civil war in America. There's a lot of fighting going on. If you've seen the trailer, guns are all over the place. Kirsten Dunst is the star of the movie. I also believe her husband, Jesse Plemons, is in the movie as well. And I've seen the trailer numerous times. Again, they're marketing this movie like crazy and it actually looks pretty decent. So I think I'm going to go, I'm going to strike that, reverse it. I think I'm going to go you know me. I mess up all the time, but I just want to coast. I want to coast. I don't want to start all over again. Anyway, I think I'm going to go, there we go, to the theater to see this movie as well. It looks like it's very well directed. Alex Garland is the director of this film, and I like his material. I think he's a different kind of voice when it comes to film, so I would like to see this movie. Plus, with it being an A24 title, the Studio A24 has been putting out great material lately, and I want to support A24 and also encourage you to go out there and watch A24 movies as well. They're different. Yes, they're outside the box. They're a little bit weird sometimes, but you know what? Some of their movies are the best original material that we're getting in a really, really long time. So support A24 if you want to. I encourage you to do so, but I hope you're interested in checking out some of their movies because they got great stuff. All right. The second movie, I can guarantee you, I am not going to go and see based on the poster alone. Nope, not going to happen. This movie is called Sting. And just by looking at the poster, it has a large spider and I don't do spiders. I don't, I don't watch anything with spiders. I've never seen arachnophobia because of this reason. I hate spiders. There is no way you're going to find me in a dark movie theater watching a movie about a huge gargantuan spider. That is not going to happen at all whatsoever. Spiders are one of my, no, it's probably is my number one fear. I was going to say it's one of my larger fears. It's probably my number one fear, which probably sounds really idiotic to a lot of people out there. Okay, that's fine. But this is me. And I can't. I cannot deal with spiders. Pretty much the plot line of this movie, this little girl in the poster, I guess, has a pet spider or something. And for some reason, it morphs to like a super large spider. No, thank you. Nope, I'm good. Maybe it's a great film. If you love spider movies, then go ahead. I'll go and watch Spider-Man, 
but not spiders. That's completely different. So I cannot, I cannot handle it. You will not find me watching Sting. If you guys go and see this movie, then feel free to report back about it. All right. The third movie on the 12th. Okay. This movie, I have to take a breath for a second because this film, I find no reason why this movie was made. This is a remake of Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Now, the reason why I say there's no reason for this is because the original Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead is one of the best 80s films of all time. I've seen that film time and time again, over and over and over. I absolutely love that movie. It is perfection. The cast is perfection. Their performances are just amazing. You, you can't duplicate that. That was 80s magic in a bottle. When I heard that this movie was being released, I said, are you kidding me? I thought it was a joke. I think I read it on Twitter somewhere. And I was, I actually felt offended that this movie was coming out because there's no reason for it. There is literally no reason. I'm not going to talk about this movie again, most likely, unless it pops into the top five on Weekend Watch. Then I will talk about the film. But other than that, nope. Because to me, this movie is not going to exist because simply there is no reason. And I know I'm not the only person that feels like this. I know a lot of people feel the exact same way that I do because when you have 80s perfection with Christina Applegate, you don't need anything else. So if you want to go and see Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, the new version, then go ahead, have a lot of fun. But you know what? It just ain't for me. It just is not for me. I will not do that to my original. I cannot do it. It. I know it's not going to live up. And plus, who knew this was coming out? Have we seen any marketing, advertising? I saw the trailer on Twitter. That's it. That's all I've seen. So if you haven't been on Twitter or X, you know, I still call it Twitter, then how would you know that this movie is being released? You wouldn't. But you know what? It doesn't matter anyway, because it's not the original, so it can go kick rocks anyway, in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> that may sound harsh to a lot of you, but when it comes to 80s classic films, I'm, I'm very protective. You know what I'm saying? There's a group of movies you don't replicate. Breakfast Club, Don't Tell Mom, Encino Man. Like, no, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Don't touch them. <laughs> don't touch them. And they touch this. And I'm very annoyed. Can you tell? All right. I know I get a little aggressive, but I have strong feelings about that. All right. And the fourth and final movie, The Weekend of the Twelfth. This film, again, had no clue. It is called Sasquatch Sunset. What is this? It's comedy. I have no idea what the movie is about. It's a very, very brief, like maybe five word description on AMC's app about what this movie is about. I think Jesse Eisenberg is in the film. That's all I know. The description is a story of a singular family, something like that. That could be anything. <laughs> that could be anything or any movie out there. It's very vague. And who knew about this film? Did anyone raise your hand? No, I can't. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know anything about this movie. Again, no trailer, no marketing, advertising, nothing. So I'm not seeing large numbers for Sasquatch Sunset. <laughs> what a name for a movie. All right, let's move on from the 12th to April 19th. We have two brand new movies on this date. One of them being one of my most anticipated movies of 2024, and that is Abigail. Abigail is a brand new vampire movie and that's why I'm so excited about seeing it because vampire films are very few and far between these days. However, we're getting Abigail and then at the end of this year, we're also getting Nosferatu. So I'm very excited. We're getting a couple in one year. That's, that's pretty good. But with Abigail, we have a little bit of a spin on the vampire story because the trailer... They've been focusing on the trailer. It's been in movie theaters. So that's, that's great. They're advertising the heck out of this thing. 
It's about like a 12 or 13 year old girl who is a vampire. And that's not a spoiler. That's all in the trailer, all over the place. But what happens is a group of criminals and Melissa Barrera is in this group of criminals. Also Catherine Newton, by the way. So this group of criminals are all like together. They have to kidnap this 12 or 13 year old girl. But what they don't realize is that she is a vampire. So I think they're in a mansion overnight and I think they have to stay overnight with her in the house and whoever lit, whoever makes it through the night is the winner or something like that. That's the vibe that I get from the trailer. But regardless, I'm interested. It's a different vampire movie and it's directed by Radio Silence. They did Ready or Not, Scream 5 and 6. So I'm interested. Plus it's got Melissa Barrera. She works well with radio silence, obviously. So I'm curious about Abigail and obviously I'm going to the theater to see this because it is one of my most anticipated films. So I gotta go support it. The other movie coming out on the 19th, it is called The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. <sighs> what a title. I thought I was gonna make a mistake. <laughs> I'm so happy that I did not. So this is a brand new film from Guy Ritchie. The description about this movie on AMC's app is so long and overly complicated. I tried reading it like five times. I didn't understand what was going on at all whatsoever. But it is a new film from Guy Ritchie starring Henry Cavill. The trailer has been out a couple of times. I've seen it before a couple of movies. So the word is getting out there. I'm not sure how to feel about this film. I'm not really sure if I'm going to go and see it at the theater, but I think Guy Ritchie also wrote this movie. And if that is the case, it's probably a very smart script because I think Guy Ritchie is a good writer. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about this one. So if you guys have heard anything about this movie, give me some feedback and comment down below and give me your thoughts because maybe if you, you know, give me good vibes and say good stuff about the film, maybe I'll go and see it. Who knows? Who knows? If I'm bored one day or something, I can always go and watch. All right, so going into the last weekend of April, two brand new movies. The first one is April 26th, by the way. The first brand new film is called Challengers. Now this film is starring Zendaya and this takes place in the tennis world and You've probably seen this trailer and I'm starting to laugh because pretty much in this trailer, Zendaya is about to have a threesome with two best friends. That's really what's going on in this movie. It's like, it takes place in the tennis world and she's like a tennis pro and, and she is kind of, I'm getting the impression that she's like kind of teasing both of them at the same time they're tennis players too and she dates one but that then ends up marrying the other one it's like this complicated love tennis story that's going on i'm not really sure what the actual plot line of the movie is it's all about love and tennis like messed up love and tennis in this movie I'm kind of curious. I am curious, like what's actually going on in this movie? But this film was actually delayed. It was supposed to come out a while ago. It got delayed, I think because of the strike that happened. They wanted to delay the project. I also believe that was the smart idea because Zendaya also has Dune Part 2 in theaters right now. You don't want to overdose on Zendaya. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe you do. I don't know. Some people don't. So to have a little bit of space in between was a good idea. So challengers, I am probably going to go and see this because I just want to know what's going on. I want to know what's going on. Does she sleep with both? I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'm curious. What is happening? What is happening in challengers? All right. And the final movie in April, major release. I'm sure there's other brand new releases that are going to be smaller coming out, but these are the major brand new releases that I like to focus on. It's called Boy Kills World. And all I know is this is another action film starring Bill Skarsgård. What happens in this movie? I honestly have no idea. I haven't seen a trailer, marketing, advertising, nothing. I haven't heard any feedback about this movie at all whatsoever. So if you guys have, again, comment down below and let me know your thoughts. 
And really quickly before I end the video, there's also another franchise of movies that is starting to be re-released in theaters in April. I believe starting on April 16th, and that is all the Spider-Man movies. We are talking all the Tobys, the Andrew Garfield films, and also all the Tom Holland movies. So all eight Spider-Man films, one a week, I believe, are being released April, May, and into June. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So that's another option for you guys as well. So those are all the major brand new releases that are currently scheduled to be released in movie theaters in April. So comment down below and let me know which of these movies you're interested in seeing. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.